Okay. Good morning, friends. Uh, I welcome you to this time of worship. Today is the third Sunday of the Easter feast. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're gathering uh, as we have been over these last several weeks as the people of God uh, from Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd in town and country and St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Manchester. I'm Father Earl Mahan and I'm joined by my colleague, Mother Pamela Sturkey. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning, Earl. How are you today? I'm fabulous. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. So we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to be worshiping using, uh, again, morning prayer, uh, right to from the Book of Common Prayer, which if you have Book of Common Prayer handy, grab it, open it up to book, uh, morning prayer and join us. Or if you don't, this service leaflet for the service we're using is posted on the websites of both churches, uh, St. Luke's EC.org and Good Shepherd EC. Dot org. Uh, you can find these services also uh, anytime after they're posted on Facetube. Facetube, that's a new one. <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> not to be confused with Facetube. <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, and the church websites. And maybe we'll get to Facetube later. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> I'm just not cut out for this. I'm just not cut out for this. Um, and we encourage you, oh, please share these worship services with your friends and family and anyone you know that might just uh, benefit from a time of prayer and worship with others. So with that, let us begin our worship morning uh, prayer. Right to Pamela. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the Pasha Nostrum, found in the service leaflet and in your prayer book. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 116 verses 1 through 3 and 10 through 17. Let us pray them together in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. 
Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let's say together Canticle 13, a song of praise. You'll find it in the service leaflet or in your prayer book. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us 
They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had, women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. He vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. They had They had told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. I cherish this story, uh, this uh, Emmaus Road story, um, for a, a lot of reasons. Um, one is um, a, a personal story that <laughs> I'm still always amazed by this. So one of the churches I served before I came to St. Louis uh, had uh, in the church itself a, uh, behind the altar, a stone relief, which was of this scene of the Emmaus Road, of the Jesus and the two disciples breaking bread. Um, and I had been at this church for some time um, before I realized what the scene was. I just, I, I, I think, nat I don't know, naturally, I assumed it was a scene of the Last Supper. And then one day someone, and I must have said that to somebody, and then someone pointed out to me and said, it's not the Last Supper. I mean, what do you mean that's not the Last Supper? It's behind the altar. It's where we have communion. Of course it's the Last Supper. And he said, no, look at it. And I looked at it and I realized, no, it was um, the scene of the breaking of the bread with the disciples from the road to Emmaus. And so, so from that moment on, um, it became, the story became for me uh, almost the, the, the story that for me brought together and I think this is one of its powers, is that it brings together the resurrection and our Eucharistic theology into one package, one, uh, one 
uh, narrative that describes how in the Eucharistic practice, the breaking of the bread, the sharing of the cup, um, Christ is risen. Easter happens every time we celebrate Eucharist. Um, you know, I later learned that there were, I wasn't the only one who always assumed that was a, a Last Supper scene behind the altar there in that church. It was, um, and so I was able, by having my own eyes open to what was right behind me on, on that altar, I was able to help others' eyes be open too. Um, an interesting footnote is the, that um, stone relief behind that altar when the church had been built over 100 years ago, um, was intended to be a Last Supper scene. And they had ordered a beautiful stone carving um, from Italy. And in transit to the United States, it was broken. And so the, uh, the people said, they said, we don't have a Last Supper scene, but we have a, we have a road to Emmaus scene or a Emmaus supper scene. So they sent that in its place of the broken last supper scene. And that's how it got put there. But I, I find this story and its ability to sort of take us into the mystical, into this moment in which time stands still, it seems. Jesus' is, uh, Jesus is presence um, with these two disciples, one of whom is unnamed, which I always, whenever there's an unnamed disciple in any of these stories, I always take that as an invitation from the gospel writer to uh, sort of insert myself uh, into the story. Who's this unnamed disciple? Well, might as well be me, might as well be you. Um, to be in this moment where time stands still, to be present with Jesus and Jesus present to us, to, to have him open up the scriptures to us, as he did with the two disciples, to, uh, to find our hearts burning within us, to have our eyes opened, and to see him, to see him as the risen Christ. Um, I was on a, a Zoom meeting uh, earlier, Today, and um, with some colleagues, another Pamela, you were there, and we were joined by our bishop elect here in the diocese of Missouri, Bishop D Bishop elect Dion Johnson, and one of the questions he asked us to to reflect upon was, "What is life giving for you right now in this time of?" global pandemic, on quarantines, et cetera. What is life giving? And you know, it can be very easy to uh, find ourselves in a place of just we're tired, we're frustrated. We wanna get out of our homes more. We want our lives to be back to normal, whatever normal is. And yet even in this moment, if if we're still long enough, we can discover the things that are life-giving. I want to suggest that maybe in this moment, we are much like those disciples on the road who encounter Jesus, though they don't recognize him at first, who are, um, they're, they're not completely focused on the negative of the fact that Jesus was uh, betrayed and killed, crucified. They are aware that something is happening. They've heard the, the, the talk, the, the, uh, the claim that from some of the others that they've seen Jesus, but they're just not sure what to make of it. You can almost sense there's still just a sense of doubt and uncertainty in their hearts until Jesus is able to open their eyes. And I think that this time for us can be like that. We can become extremely uh, 
just kind of inwardly focused and get down on our situation and begin to lose hope and not see the opportunities around us that are life-giving, the signs around us that are life-giving, the relationships around us that are life-giving. Jesus opened the eyes of the disciples. He helped them to see what was life-giving in their midst, right there in front of them, in the breaking of the bread and in the opening of the scriptures to them. And Jesus comes to us today as well. He knows what we've been through and he knows what we're going through. And he opens to us the word of God. He sits and breaks bread with us. And our eyes are opened and our hearts burn within us. This is the promise of Easter. That, that which is life-giving is in our midst. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Remembering that Christ is risen indeed. Let us say together the words that summarize our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continuing with suffrages B, save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, 
that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I now invite your authorized intercessions, thanksgivings, personal intercessions and petitions, either silently or aloud. Ask your prayers for all those affected by the coronavirus, the healthcare workers, their families, for those who are suffering, those who are sick, and those who grieve. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to bless people with compassionate hearts and a willingness to serve the needs of their brothers and sisters everywhere. We thank you for the members of our parish families and their kindness and generosity to each other and to others in the community and ask that you continue to remind them that you are always present in their lives. We pray for the family of the Reverend Sabi Sarkissian who died this past week. We thank you for his service as a priest of your church, O oh God. And we pray that his family, his wife, his children, grandchildren, may, while they mourn his passing, celebrate the gift of his life. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. So sorry I disappeared there for a few minutes. I had a, a battery die. <laughs> Technical difficulties, but we carried through, we carried on. Um, it's good to be with you, Pamela. It's good to be with all of you, friends. And thank you for joining us for this time of worship. We invite you to join us again next Sunday as we celebrate the risen Christ. God's peace be with you. Take care. <laughs>